focus on the things you can change and control. Your mindset and your actions in response to this crisis. Those are things that you can control. Today's podcast episode is in my response to the COVID-19 crisis that we are all currently dealing with. This is the launch of a new season of Backstage Business, but instead of a big to-do with fabulous guests that I do have lined up and have already recorded, I feel that this is much more timely and important to address. I did send emails out in regards to this, and I have received so many wonderful responses from you all. Thank you so much. I also posted a blog on this topic, and so today I wanted to reinforce my thoughts on this and to share with you what I'm doing, what we're doing as a business to get through this time that is filled with so much uncertainty right now. I also wanted to share how we are doing. As a team, we are we are staying strong and we are staying positive. There's quite a handful of, of the team that has decided not to be focused on the doom and gloom and listening to the news on a daily basis and have instead decided to look at the facts, take a quick moment each day to see where we are at, but to continue on with the day and to try to focus on the positive as as much as possible. And for each of us, I understand that that's different for everyone, easier said than done for depending on your on your situation during this. But here's a question that I keep asking myself, what's going to happen? As entrepreneurs, we love to say that we embrace uncertainty and that we can rise to any challenge, that we can thrive under pressure. And now that the world is facing a global pandemic of this COVID-19, we need to start practicing what we preach and The first step to that, I know this, even though I'm guilty of it, is to stop asking what's going to happen. I get it. I totally get it. I it's it's a looming question. But the thing is, is that we don't know. Nobody knows. We're told different pieces of information each day, and we just don't know. And when you're running a business or are like me, responsible for over 14 salaries and keeping other independent contractors busy with work, it can get real scary real fast. And you start to question things like, should should I really be telling people about my solutions right now? Should I, should I still be marketing and advertising? Or should I just totally pause on everything? Because what's going to happen? Is it a waste of money? Is it a good use? Am I even bringing value? And I say to that, instead, we should start asking, what can I do to make a difference in my life and in my business right now? I'm looking for the answer to this question myself on on the daily. I find myself turning to the wisdom of others. If you know me, you know that I'm obsessed with reading other mentors and influencers and books and listening to podcasts. I have my own set of personal heroes and leaders that I follow. And I'm choosing to focus on those that continue to inspire me and have a realistic outlook on this, yet very positive those that are taking this really seriously, but also finding the positive to focus on. And I think that's so important. It's been really important for us and it's been really important for my team to to do that. And so today I want to share some of that wisdom with you too. And I know that we can all use this, especially right now. So how can you make sure that your business doesn't just survive this crisis? Because if you're listening to this podcast, you probably are a very driven entrepreneur and you're not just about how do I survive? You're trying to look at this and say, how can I come out on the other side even stronger? So how can you make sure that your business doesn't just survive this crisis, but comes out on the other side even stronger? So here are the five things that we are focusing on with our team. But before I I go further, I do want to acknowledge and say that I completely understand that we are all in different positions. Some of us still have businesses that are running and some are completely shut down. Some might be in between and slowing down. And of course, a lot of us are in the unknown. I just received an email yesterday from the franchise owners of Orange Theory Fitness, which is a gym that 
I love. If you know what Orange Theory Fitness is, it's you're running on the treadmill, you're doing weights, you're also rowing on a machine, and you're trying to maintain a certain amount of points for your heart rate level. But it's it's a gym that I just love. I love the instructors. It's it's one of those places you go and see your your neighbors, and it's just a great community feeling. And I received the email that said that they had to temporarily lay off more than 80% of their workforce. And they continued on to say that it was beyond their comprehension after experiencing such tremendous growth and having felt so strong in their growth just weeks before all of this and to now be in this place of having zero income. And this is so many businesses right now. I mean, revenues have just stopped. They've they've had to drastically cut salaries. Orange Theory had to drastically cut salaries to keep on people, but cut their salaries and just to, you know, stay stay in business. And like many other businesses, they they stated that they do intend to return and hire these people back. But for now, they have to really slow things down because when you have zero revenue, what can what can you do? But they're not going all out. And that's what stood out to me. They're not going out all the way. They're just doing what they need to do to survive. And so they're on social media and they're posting free workouts for their members that they can do from home. They're keeping everyone engaged. And it just spoke so loudly to me because I feel like that is what's so important and the things that you do right now to show up for your community and your audience to show that you care and to be so transparent and and vulnerable and honest. To me, I'm going to guess that this company is going to come out on the other side being being strong and, and somehow it's going to bring people closer together. Everyone has a different challenge that they're dealing with right now and, and many will, will during this time, but there's people that, that are not feeling it as, as much. There are still people out there and businesses out there that are spending dollars because they've set themselves up to survive a storm like this. And they know that on the other side of the storm, they will be strong. So they're continuing on with business, whether it's from home or not, they're still continuing on with, with their marketing plans or with projects and services and things that they plan to release because they know that this this will end and they have the means to do so. And I encourage you guys to think of that as well, that there are still people. Now, I don't know what kind of, of business you're in, so please apply this as, as you see fit. It really does depend what kind of, of business you're in, but I think that you know even those that had to have completely shut down, there are things that they can do to keep the spirit of it alive so that when they return, people are ready to hop back on board and also, you know, just, just create this like, wow, you guys really showed up for us when all, when all of this went, went down. Okay. So let me go into the five ways to, to thrive during a time of crisis. And this, you know, hopefully would apply to any type of crisis that, that happens. Again, I did share this on our blog. You'll also see this in, in the show notes. So I'm I'm elaborating on this for, for this in, interview, not interview, <laughs> for this podcast. So the first one is resolve to keep calm, as calm as you can anyway. I know, I know this is a super tough thing to ask. Every day, there are like 10,000 more news stories about how COVID-19 is the worst thing ever and how we're all doomed. In the face of all of that, freaking out is the normal. It's expected. It's the human thing to do, but it can't be all that you do. You do have control, even if you forget in some moments, which is easy to do. You do have control over staying calm or freaking out. And right now, it's more important than ever to keep calm because there's nothing that you can do about the virus, the lockdowns, the shortages, flights getting canceled. There's nothing you can do about any of that. So even trying, like there's, what can you do? Turn, tune out the worst of the noise as much as you can and control what you can within your own space. I mentioned this quote in my emails and blog from the Stoic philosopher slash Roman emperor Marcus Aurelius, who wrote in his diary 2000 years ago. And the quote is, 
you have power over your mind, not outside events. Realize this and you will find strength. You have power over your mind, not outside events. Realize this and you will find strength. Focus on the things you can change and control. Your mindset and your actions in response to this crisis. Those are things that you can control. The second one is to reflect on your company's place in the world. Here's where some people can get annoyed with me and say, Summer, now is not the time for this. I'm not thinking about my business right now. I'm thinking about other things. I get it. I totally get it. And I hear you. And as I stated before, this is my opinion and coming from my experience right now. So take from it what you will, but still recognize that we are all having different challenges because of this. And I absolutely do recognize that. So if you think now is not the time to reflect on your business's place in the world, if you are a a leader in your business, I will say that I respectfully disagree with that. But here's why. First of all, the crisis, any crisis, will give you two precious gifts, and it's gifts that all entrepreneurs want. It's why they're an entrepreneur. One of them is the time to step away and look at the big picture. And the other is a completely new perspective on everything. We want that. Have you ever noticed how the feeling of uncertainty brings a different perspective on what is important in life? I know I've had a ton of that happen. It's it's such a feeling of uncertainty, and yet the things that are so important have become so certain during this time. You want to use these things to your advantage while you have them, especially in your business. So it's time right now to ask those tough questions, things that you may have said, you know what, I should take some time to look at this. I should take some time to really think about my my business and look at the big picture. It's things that we as entrepreneurs say that we're going to do. We probably write it on our list of things to do and then we put it on to the next day or the next quarter because we're so busy doing other things and going to meetings and, and tackling what's in front of our face. But now is really a great opportunity to ask these questions. And those are questions like, what is your mission? Is it something that you're aware of and try to embody every day? Do you have a mission? Has that mission shifted? Is your team aware of this mission? Do they do they feel aligned with it and, and all that is going on? What is the goal of this business that you have? Who is it there to serve? Really, is your team super aligned on on all of this? Now is a great time to reflect upon that and and see if if they are in alignment and what can you do to get them to be aligned? What is your company's place in the market? Is it everything you wanted it to be? Is your business going in the direction that that you wanted? Are you solving those problems that you wanted to solve or has it shifted? Has it shifted and you like how it's shifting or is it going off track? Do you add enough value to your customers that they'll miss you when you're gone? So right now, are people missing you? If you are shut down, if you're not able to give your clients what they're used to having from you, are they missing you? When when all this comes back, will they return to you or will they go somewhere else? Are you able to value right now, or I'm sorry, are you able to bring value right now that can help them during this time while at the same time helping you? In other words, supporting the economy. Answer these questions as honestly as you can, and then make a plan for how to align your business with those answers. And when I say align your business, also aligning your team. I truly believe that now is the perfect time to do this because you're really going to need it because whether you think they are or not, there are tons of other businesses and many that are your competitors that aren't 
doing this type of strategizing, that are not thinking ahead and that are not reevaluating everything that they thought was right. They're not recalibrating. They're not reflecting on on their business. They're really just thinking about, are we going to get through this? They're panicking. They're just shutting down. They're turning off all advertising and they're just freezing. And I don't think that that's the right thing to do. So many are scrambling in a panic and they're just kind of going through the motions or they're looking for somebody else to tell them what to do. And I can tell you that that kind of behavior is not productive because when the dust settles and when we come out of this, those who have done nothing will have learned nothing or they're about to learn a much harder lesson but you have the opportunity to be different. You can actually emerge with your business being stronger than ever. You can now get more connected with your teams. You can now think of providing more value for your customers. Listen to them. They're speaking up a lot more now. What do they need? What can you do to answer that need for them? So here are some things that we are doing as as a team, maybe some of them will spark some ideas for you. We've really been coming together a lot more regularly than than we used to, believe it or not. That's one of those things that that has come out of this is sure we were we were all talking to each other via tools like Basecamp, um, text messaging, Slack, you know, all the all the tools that a lot of us have, especially if you're working with a virtual team. But I'm here I'm here in San Diego and most of my San Diego teammates, we work, we work from home, we work virtual, we work in co-working spaces. Our main offices are in Utah and most of our team is there in Utah in their office. Now they're not, they're all working from home. But even when they were in the offices, there's, you know, place for filming, there's a place for editing. They're not necessarily all you know, on top of each other all the time. And sometimes some people are are working from home. So there's a lot of, you know, mixed stuff going on. And interestingly enough, we've we've all been communicating more so via Zoom, via Facebook workplace, all communicating on the same topics, not just, hey, need you for this, hey, need you for that. It's really coming together on, hey, I have an idea of how we could really help our customers or, hey, let's all get on a Zoom call and have lunch together. It's uh, coming together on a more regular basis, which has actually set a precedent now of how we want to move forward because it's it's been really good. We've actually started to see you know, things that we can improve upon in our processes. And this this happening has given us that opportunity to do so. There's also projects that we've all been talking about that we really want to get into action. And we're doing that now. This is this is now like, okay, let's let's get this into motion. And it's it's interesting because we've actually been more productive on our marketing ventures than we had been in a long time. We had a lot of great ideas and I've been hearing from other leaders and business owners that they're taking this as an opportunity to not halt on marketing, but actually get that marketing going on steroids. Like, hey, now we have a chance to build new ads. Now we have a chance to build new assets, make sure our sales funnel is absolutely on point. And to do those things so that when things return to normal, to do those things now is 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 amazing and I think will absolutely help us be stronger and help other businesses be stronger. We've taken this as an opportunity in just a short amount of time to really line up new promotions and services that our customers have been asking for, to fine tune landing pages and and email sequences and funnels and sales processes. We've really been focusing on, on that. So Amidst all of this, we've gotten a heck of a lot more organized, much like people at their homes are like, I'm finally going to organize my closet. I'm finally going to do some meal prepping or whatever it is that they're they're doing to, to stay organized. Those things have Im- improved a lot. And we've organized and implemented a lot of strategies across all boards that that 
kept getting kept getting put aside <laughs> and like things that we we will we'll revisit when we have time. We'll do that when we have time. But now we've really listened to each other. We've we've also connected more deeply with our clients because like I said, at least on our end, we've had clients and customers like really reaching out with with their concerns, with what they need help with. It's really great to be more connected with them. The more that you can be connected with with your with your clients, with your customers is just so so powerful, especially as you know, especially as you think into the future of of working with these people and and really being able to be there for them during a time like this. And we're learning what our place is for them and and how we can best serve them. And here's another thing that's really important. I'm really encouraging my team and I'm re- encouraging other businesses to not feel guilty about it. To not feel guilty that you're thinking about your business and and how what you can do to make money during this time. I mean, I mean that's business. We need to stay in business because the truth is is that if we stop selling and and we stop buying, it's going to further make the economy worse. And I don't think any of us want that to happen. And instead, we can actually be a part of helping other businesses and our own and the economy as a whole if we continue to focus on what we do and what we sell that helps people solve their problems. There are still people out there that can afford what you have and what you do. And in our business, we've we've seen both. I mean, we've seen we've seen clients that have paused their projects and they're waiting until this is over. They're not spending another dollar. They're not moving forward on anything until this is over. But we've also seen businesses that have have more urgency to get their marketing assets created so that they can communicate their messages and so that they are ready to go when this simmers. And some of them have extremely important messages that they need to communicate right now to their teams, you know, like how how are we moving forward? How long is this going to last? And and what do our what does our team need to know? What do our employees need to know? There are businesses out there with you know hundreds and hundreds of employees that they need to communicate with. And they, this is important for them. So all that to say is that there are people that are still spending money. So what is it that you can offer? What kind of value can you bring that helps you to stay in business that also is going to help them? That is what will keep our economy going. Because selling, if done in the right way, is really sharing. So don't just try to, don't take advantage of somebody in, in a weak position, offer something that can actually help them is something that is, is, is necessary for them. And it's going to be different for every business. For us, we know that it's communicating messages. It's, it's, it's making messages impossible to misunderstand. It's getting super clear. And if we can help businesses do that right now and also get them set up, so that they are ready to be strong when this is over and come out super strong, then we are there for them. But we're doing that in in a compassionate way. So if you are selling something, share, I hope that it's sharing value that you have to offer in a very compassionate way, because it's not wrong to keep your business in business. It is not wrong to keep your business in business, especially if you are bringing value and helping others. I would also add to this, don't worry what other people will say or think because you're still out there marketing your business and advertising your business. If you are, if you are and you feel guilty, I would say don't worry what other people think because there are some people that will make you feel bad because you're motivated during this time or you're you're inspired that that you oh my gosh, I I I know what I can do to help other people. That's not a bad thing. Don't feel bad. Don't feel bad for doing something that's positive for other people. If you're focused on finding the positive and wanting to come out strong, as long as you know why you're doing what you're doing and as long as you are bringing value and helping others and not taking advantage of them, please don't worry about what other people will think because people will say things 
on the sidelines, but if they're not in it, if they're not in your position and running a business like you are and responsible for other people's salaries and really trying to 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 hold strong if they're not in their position then please don't don't take their opinion <laughs> don't don't take it as something that you're going to to listen to okay the third don't just react respond i see this all the time in personal life i say this to my kids the COVID-19 situation is changing faster than anybody can keep up with. I mean, f- from the moment I stop recording this, we're going to have new information. And it's easy to spend so much time, so much time just reacting to everything that's happening. You can check on Amazon 50 times in one hour for more toilet paper and hand sanitizer. You can be on hold with an airline for two hours as you try to cancel your flight. You can spend hours and hours suspending operations and and all kinds of things and just obsessing over it until it blows over. But in the moment, these fast twitch reactions, they might seem like the best thing to do. They might even look like, hey, this is the only option I have right now. But really look at it because I don't think that they are the only options. So the next time that something unexpected happens and you feel the urge to react right now and 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 get all upset in a panic, you would ask yourself, does does this thing right now need my immediate attention or can I can I get back to it later when I've when I've carefully thought it out? Most things are not as urgent as you believe in the moment. Even especially in a crisis like this. There are things that we feel like we've just got to jump up and and react, 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 react. <laughs> Look at some things from the past when you've done that. Do you ever think, oh, okay, I might have I might have done that in haste. I might have I might have reacted in an immature way or in a very non-productive way, but I was freaking out. Hey, I get it. I get it. I get the freak out. But take a breather, take a pause, let it simmer so that you can respond and ask yourself, is there anything more important that I should be doing right now? As a business owner, you want to play the long game. So running around, just putting fires out really quickly because you think that's the right thing to do might not might might not be the right thing to do. So remember that your response to this situation is what's going to shape your company's future for years to come. Don't waste this opportunity. Be an example to your team members. Be an example to to your audience, to your customers. Be that example of how you can respond, creatively respond, not just react. And number four, show up. When you're doing this, it allows you to show up as the best version of yourself for everybody, for your family, for your spouse, for your loved ones, for your friends, for your team for your customers, for your audience. Those people that rely on you, they need you now more than ever. They need your empathy. They need your support, your leadership. So asking yourself how you can best support these people in your life and in your business right now, it's a really powerful question. Ask them. Things like persuading your elderly parents to stay home and take things seriously. Heck, I had to do that. Checking in with your friends who who live far away, or those that live down the street, but you can't see, (laughs) they need you too. I had neighbors, I had friends saying, hey, look, I still need you. Can we hang out even if it's on a virtual dinner or a virtual happy hour? Be there for them. Help your teams transition into working remotely. For some of them, it's pretty stressful. They're like, I have crying babies at home and I can't focus. I can't do these calls. Can you help me? (laughs) Is there somebody else who's at home who has older kids? Or is there somebody else who can help me do these calls? Right now, I can't do them anymore. Things are going to shift. Right now, we have to recalibrate and we have to do things that are going to work for us. How can you help as a leader get your team in a place where they feel like they can confidently do the things they need to do at home? And how can we take away some things from them and, and have some other team members help with them? 
Make sure that you're stocking up on what you need in the most safe way possible. What can you do to cover the surprises that might come up? Reach out to customers. Reach out to your your best clients and ask them what they need. Have your sales team do that. Give give your clients flexibility on on payments. Hey, I'm going to need a little bit longer to make that payment. Okay, we got you. Hey, can you break this up into fewer payments? Yeah, we got you. What can you do to support? As an entrepreneur, there is so much that you can do to make this crisis just a little bit less devastating, just a little bit. So I'm hoping that you're taking this opportunity to show up for them and and really be that best version of yourself. And the last, the last number five, focus on what you do best and deliver more of it. The way I see it is that you can tackle the COVID-19 crisis or any crisis for that matter in one of two ways. You can do what everybody else is doing, or at least a majority of everyone else is doing, and hit pause on your business. Just shut things down, cut your losses, and wait the worst of it out. Or you can roll up your sleeves and you can get to work doing what you've always done, creating amazing results for your customer, present and future. Show people what you can do for them when this is over and do it for your customers that you have right now. There are people running business right now because businesses are still running. (laughs) They are still running. Some of them aren't, but a lot of them still are. Nobody knows exactly how this whole situation will develop in the future But what I do know is that it's not the time for just sitting on the sidelines. Step up, be of service, provide value. Contact your existing customers, ask them what you can do for them in this time. Get your your message out to leads and prospects, offer to help. Because when your competitors are running scared, it's your responsibility to rise to the challenge. Did you hear that? When your competitors are running scared and shutting down, it's your responsibility now to rise to the challenge and help these people, help these businesses. You might think that you have to sit this one out, that you don't have a choice on the matter, but you do. You just need to recognize it. And I'm going to go back to Marcus Aurelius and one of his quotes that is so powerful. And I've been saying it a lot during this time. The impediment to action advances action. What stands in the way becomes the way. The impediment to action advances action. What stands in the way becomes the way. I'm wishing you so much tremendous strength and inspiration in these days, in these weeks, in these months to come. Because I believe that you've got this. (laughs) 